but before we head in, I want to show you the following. A brand new upcoming course all about creating rocks. We will be tackling modular pieces, rocks, boulders, different sizes and different techniques that come with it. Further developing the topology and unwrapping in Maya and Audrey software, creating masks and textures in Substance Paint to design or in Quixel, and setting up the shader from scratch in Engine, showing different methods of texturing, options within the shader, and shader methods as a whole and much more which will be shown in upcoming videos and finally the release of the course. In the meantime, check out the other resources another brand has to offer in the links down below. And with that said, enjoy the video. Hey and welcome back. So let's get started. So we have the overview right here. Uh, it's pretty much all we're gonna need to make these bricks that we're seeing right here. Here we have the 3D view, the light, and here we have the diffuse. So let's just jump in. We have the Tau random, clouds two node and crystal one node as the noise or base of this whole uh, of the whole thing. So just try to get a brick pattern from the tile random by using these settings right here. You can lower it a little bit as well if you want to. Uh, and then all the other settings are quite default, I would say. Just a bit of random offset, so all these lines aren't aligned that much. I mean, it happens sometimes, but like here shouldn't happen you can offset them a bit more you just gotta play around a little bit see what works if it doesn't work um, and these noises right here we're gonna go back to later so moving on to the blur node as you can see here the bricks are square like really 90 degrees square so what we're gonna do is blur them out and then use a histogram scan to give them a bit of roundness there and then now slow blur to get some cuts in and some depth and we're gonna use the crystal one node with a direction warp a little bit, you can increase the intensity or whatever. As you can see, it plays quite a big role on the whole material, but it gives us a basic shape. From there, we want to close the gaps a little bit and pretty much blur these lines out a little bit. So the high mark works a bit better and you don't want too much space between the bricks either. So we're gonna bevel them first to well create a bevel and some height information in there. Then we're gonna blur that and put it into a slow blur grayscale. As you can see, it's just using the same maps. Don't worry about this bit, this goes somewhere else. It's just using these two outputs, blurring these and pretty much putting them together in a slow blur grayscale to put them really tightly together. Like they are inflating into one another. And then with a bit of blur, we just fix that. So before we move on to the brick worn, so pretty much giving it a worn look, like weathering effect and whatever. We need some height variation and some grayscale variation. So we're gonna utilize a flush fill, fill that to a great gradient with the following settings. Then we're gonna pick the flush fill again and put it into a random grayscale. So we get some different grayscale tints. And then together with the pearl noise, we're gonna blur the shit out of it and then just put it into a direction of warp to create following shapes. But this one will come back later. Let's now focus on this one right here. So by blurring out the random grayscale and using a contrast node to bring the contrast a little bit close to one another, we can move on to the brick worn. So here we're grabbing the flat fill gradient together with the blur. And pretty much what we're doing, as you can see right here, is soften out the edges a little bit. Then we're gonna work on the height of the cement and the bricks in general, since we want some to be a little bit worn down or damaged. We're gonna use a slow blur grayscale with my favorite node, Clouds 2. Just gonna slow that with itself. I set the clouds to its size quite low. It's gonna have no effect really on uh, the whole thing. So you just play around with the settings. Slope it and there we go. We get these nice little effects here. Then we're gonna go through another slow blur grayscale with a normal clouds to note this time. And then we just blend it together with a max slider. And as you can see, if I drag the slider up, we get some more wear and tear and detail in the bricks. You can already see it on the height map. You can see it a little bit right here. So now we have our base shape already and it's time to head onto the detail pass. We're gonna add more to it later on. So starting off with a Gaussian noise, we're gonna Warp it into a slow blur grayscale, so we got these little dents in the bricks right here. A bit of deformation and some height information. Then we're just going to use a clouds 2 node over there. 
and slope it. Then pretty much again well, with different settings and different cloud to noise. You can also reuse probably this one or another one we've used, but I just decided to hook it in. If you're curious on how to hook these nodes, what you do if you have your node right here and connect it, and it doesn't have multiple connections, you can just hit D to dock it. And then we just hook it up, and as you can see, if we change the slider, we can add some weather and tear, weathering effects, and etc. to our bricks. I've exposed the parameter, hence why I'm doing it in this step here and not in the node itself. So now for the really fine details, you can see here, we got some nice flow here, a bit of grain, uh, chipping, and etc. It is actually quite easy, so we're gonna go to the detail pass too. Use a histogram to get a full black and white contrast map. We're gonna need a layer for masking. And then to get this detail over here, we're gonna use an anistro uh, anisotropic noise, yes. And a cloud steel, and put it into a slow blur grayscale to get the following effect. Now just a normal perlin noise, we're gonna warp that. And then using our mask over here, we're gonna put it into a directional warp of quite a high setting. So as you can see, it will start to flow following the following the bricks. And you get different patterns as well. Don't worry about the stretching or whatever. You can always play around with the settings to get what you want, like this works as well. But in some cases, I quite like the stretching as well. So yeah, it's really up to you in the end. And from then we just blend it in with a really low opacity setting. So you can barely see it in the op in the height map, but it's there. But then for the cement, dirt, mortar, or whatever you want to call this bit here, quite simple, just the clouds node, bring the contrast a bit close together, pearl the noise, increasing the contrast and blurring it a bit more, bring it together. So pretty much the pearl noise is the height map. So some bits are higher and some bits are lower in the mortar or dirt, whatever. And now we just blend that with some normal dirt nodes to get a little bit of variation going. Again, not too much because otherwise you get this, but just some tiny speckles here and there. So to get these holes in the map you're seeing over here, these little dents and holes and air bubbles in the bricks, we're gonna use a dirt two node. Use a slope screw. Use a slow blur grayscale on it and blur it with itself and then slope it with itself with the blur node as the intensity input. Then this node goes into a histogram scan and then we slope it a little bit to get some more height information in there as you can see. So I did the following, I thought this wasn't enough so I just grabbed the transformation 2D node, moved it around a little bit, make sure it kept on tiling and then blend the two together. And from there, I just blend them in to the high map. You can't really see them, but if I increase it, as you can see. You can't really see them there, but they are there. And then for the dirt and mortar, as we made over here, we're just gonna blend it in with a max alighted. And that's it, then you pretty much already have your high map. You can add some more details to the bricks, but for a simple brick material, I think this is, uh, I think this is plenty. So there you go, we already have our high map done. I think you can add some more detail if you want, but I think for a simple brick material, this is already plenty. Now for the roughness, I'm just gonna grab uh, the normal map over here. From the high map, use a curve to smooth, slow bro grayscale it to even out the gray values a little bit and get some Roughness values, as you can see right here, I think this looks quite interesting. Then blend it together. I know this is really dark, but then with the contrast now, we're gonna crank up the luminosity a little bit. And by setting the contrast almost on full from the height map, we get these shapes over here. And then we just blend them together, pretty much masking out some parts and adding some interesting roughness to it. You could add weathering effects like moss or like wet spots as well if you want whatever uh, that's up to you now for the color it's quite simple again we're going to use our normal map that we have over here run to a curvature smooth and then to a gradient map with the following colors same thing again but another gradient map and then we're just going to blend the two together from there i use a hsl map to get the colors i want i can do them here as well 
but it just gives me more a bit more control in the situation. I think when I was making this, I wasn't too happy with these colors. I wanted to go for different looks. This also provides some nice gray and yellow tints we can use later on. And from this output as well, we're gonna grab another gray map to paint our bricks red with some yellow accents to it and a bit of gray. So going back to a HSL map, we're gonna blend that together with some color for the pebbles in the mortar and how we did that is easy as fuck. So we just grabbed the one, we got the node over here from our blends as pebbles, so the little air holes we see over here. We just grab those, head over here and put them through a gradient map with an orange tint, quite high. Do the same again with white, but then we're just going to use a different map. So as you can see the one we moved over here, we're going to use that one. Blend the two together like we did over here. Now we have two colors and then we're just going to blend them in with a screen option. So some pebbles are a bit wider, some have a little bit of an orange color through it. And now they have the big shapes. And now with the big shapes have a bit of color, we want some small speckles in there as well, some color variation in the mortar. So what we're going to do is grab a dirt 2 node. You can reuse one as well if you want to, I'm just going to grab a new one. With a gray map set them to yellow and blend them together to get some nice speckles in. Of course we do mask so that the speckles only apply to the mortar. So for that what we're going to do is create one. So we're going to grab from the detail pass the following map right here, the non-uniform grayscale, and use a histogram to make a bit more of a solid black and white contrast. Invert it so we want the mortar selected and then just use it as a mask. So using the histogram scan again with the inverted one, we're gonna hook this up right here. So only the bricks get affected and we're gonna blend the early made grading map with the uh, pretty much the red bricks on top of the ones with here with a soft light so we can pretty much adjust it ourselves if we want the stronger red bricks or maybe even gray ones. As you can see there's some color variation going on as well, we're gonna get to that in a bit. First off we're gonna add some tints or some AO kind of stuff so to say to the bricks. As you can see we're gonna add a bit of color variation there. So again just grab a grading map and assign the colors that you want. We're gonna use the curve just move that we made in the beginning. And then by grabbing the output over here from the flood fill tab, blending it together with the histogram scan, we can get some color variation. As you can see, if I adjust it, you will see the color variation pop up. And with a contrast luminosity node, we can sample out some of the bricks. And now we blend it together. We have somewhat of a smart, slight color variation and to emphasize it even more, we just use a normal uniform uh, color with the mask we made over here to make them overall a bit more red. And from there you have some more color variation. If you want, you can just give this a completely different color, brighter or blue bricks, whatever your heart pretty much desires. And from there our diffuse is done. And with that we have a height map, normal map, AO map, which is a simple AO node, roughness, and our diffuse. And with that our brick material is done.